Good morning, friends, wherever you are, and welcome to today's uh, Cichlids and Coffee. Wherever you are, I hope you're having a, a cup of your favorite beverage. I'm having a, a strong cup of coffee in my Ohio Cichlid Association Extravaganza Cup that was given to me. See it there? Given to me at the talk I gave in Ohio. Kind of a cool cup. I'm liking it. Hey, Michael. Michael was there. Such a pleasure to meet him in person. You see the names over the years, and then you uh, you finally get to see somebody in person. Such a cool thing. And let me plug in these headphones so I don't get an echo on the sound. How is the AV? How does the how does the uh, sound and picture look to you? Let me know. And we got a pretty good pretty good topic today. I also met uh, Price Tag. Price Tag was also at the talk, and uh, maybe he'll be here in today's live stream. Let me see. What do we got? We got Miguel is here. My fish tanks, aquatics, AV is great. Thank you so much for that. Thank you, Miguel. Thank you for that AV check. Appreciate it. Melissa's in the house, and Ray and Robin, and Larry O'Brien is here. Cat Sailor. Hey, Cat Sailor. Zzip. Dustin. MedCow74 is in the house. Let's see here. Raz and Fishes. <laughs> Palm Cart is here. And Angelo's in the house. Great, great group of fish keepers, and more of them are jumping on. And uh, Z Zip. Let's see. Ray and Wet Sleeves Aquatics. Love that. Wet Sleeves Aquatics. You know, even in a T-shirt, I often, uh, when you have tanks that are this high and you go to do something, uh, you're, uh, you're in the Wet Sleeves Aquatics Club. So thank you for, for showing up here today. And I saw somebody that said new watcher. Let me see. Was it L Fish? Bill D in the house. Brian Park. Vaughn is here. Vaughn Lurker. Von Lurker, <laughs> great name. <laughs> you were at the talk. That's great. I'm glad you liked it. I, I had a lot of fun. It was more of a, in my mind, and you know, when you go to give a talk, you you don't know, you don't know what direction. I mean, you sort of know, but you're not really sure what direction, and and feel it's going to have until you get in there and get a feel for the crowd, and and it quickly went from being a talk you know a talk to the, to the association it quickly became an interactive experience where there was a lot of a, a lot of questions a lot of comments and I, I i had i had my powerpoints and i and i had uh, a certain direction that i wanted the talk to go in but the truth is is that is that the uh, the audience ended up sort of giving it a, a different and very positive direction, I thought. And, and we got into some really good discussions, and, and some folks later commented that they had learned something new, and that, that, that's always great. And not even necessarily from me. They learned it from comments that were made in the audience from a very knowledgeable uh, group of fish keepers, the Ohio uh, Cichlid and Catfish Association. They're also very big into catfish. So we have a um, we have a, a fun topic today, and and you know filters are. Uh, some people take their their filters very seriously, and some people don't. But um, we're going to uh, talk a little bit about some of the comments that came came up in a survey that I did, and you know I I tend to be a little bit in a a little bit in a bubble, a little bit in a vacuum. I have the filters that I use, and they work for me. And I'm not doing a, a tremendous amount of, um, of of filter reviews, like new filter reviews. I wouldn't mind doing them, but I just it's just not something that seems to be part of the channel, at least not currently. So, um, you know, in my bubble, in my sort of filter echo chamber, 
I I have familiarity and comfort with a certain certain kinds of filters, and because of that, I can lose touch to some degree with what's going out there in the uh, in the fish keeping community. And you you know you see you see um, waves that come through, right? You see a big uh, you, know, you see a lot of talk about uh, canisters, a lot of talk about sponge filters, a lot of talk about sumps. Kind of comes through in waves in the community, and uh, I thought it'd be real interesting to just just throw something out there, like okay, um, what what filter was a filter you'll never buy again, you know, and and kind of get that feedback. In all fairness, there's also a survey up at my YouTube community page asking for your best filter. What's been your your best all time filter? And and so we'll do. We'll do a follow-up video, either in a live stream or an actual video, that kind of balances the topic, and we'll look a little bit at what some of the some of your favorite filters are as well. Today, we'll look at the ones that you're never that you never want to buy again, and uh, and for whatever reason. So we'll t we'll take a look at that, and we'll comment. You know, we'll talk about the different comments that were made, which can always be um, can always be interesting. So let's um, let's go ahead and do the uh, the uh, the official the official start of the live stream, and you you know what that is. There you go. It's it's official now. We are actually on our way. So let's see. More folks have come on here. Brian, you're welcome for the food samples I sent to you. And uh, let's see. George is here. Kendall and Fish View Cam is here. Now, by the way, Fish View Cam, you've reminded me of something uh, with your name. I have these real cool little... Um, Little covers. These are covers that have a, a little an adhesive on the back, and you can slide them over the camera on your computer. You know, people can install software on your computer and 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 take a look at what you're doing. Kind of creepy when you think about it. But glass cages, my friend Joe over at Glass Cages gave me a bunch of these little covers. And what, what you do is you is you put them over the, um, I have one on right now, you put it over the um, camera of your computer and you can slide it back and forth so you can have it shut, you can have it closed. Can you make that out? It says glass cages on it. But anyway, he gave me a dozen of those. If you want one of these, just send me an email to ben.o.cichlid. I've got about a dozen of them that I took to Ohio. Uh, Ben.o.cichlid, and I'll send you one of these uh, computer camera covers from Glass Cages, and I'll throw in uh, a couple of the Glass Cages stickers, which are very, very cool. Just something I thought of, and uh, might as well share it with you. Why not? Uh, Cruise Aquatics in the house. Ray Mack is here, and uh, did I say William Dyer? All right, and. More and more of you are coming on, and that's a good thing. So, as some of you know, I'm, I'm starting in on a sump project. I'm waiting for some, um, from, for some sipon, sipon, I'm yeah, pronouncing it right, it's up here, Siporax, S-I-P-O-R-A-X. I'm waiting for some Siporax. Very high quality uh, media. My friends at my friends at Sarah, uh, they're very good to me. You know, you know. I send you samples of Sarah food, so um, they're going to send me a box of Sipora. I'm going to put some Sipora in there after the uh, after the after the sponges. The sponges are here, and this is a sample of the kind of sponge. Take a look at this thing. This is called a uh, matten sponge. I get them from Swiss Tropicals. 
they're not cheap. The three the three sponges that are um, four inches wide, so the water has to travel through four inches of sponge, coarse, medium, and fine, in that order. So the four sponges that are fifteen or no, yeah, fifteen inches tall. I think they're fifteen. In, I think they're fourteen inches wide. Anyway, I've got them in the sink. I rinsed them. They're drying. Um, they're here. They're not cheap. They're about a, it was about hundred and fifty dollars in sponges. Sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? But but they're they're really high quality. And I want to thank I want to thank you folks because you who watch the videos, give the videos a thumbs up, show up on Saturdays, super chat. You you help me with that kind of stuff. You help me with with um, with things like that. Uh, I'll show you something else that you're helping me with, which is amazing. Uh, a couple things. This is a 40 gallon on wheels propane tank, and that's the th that's the monster that's going to be providing fuel to my generator. So in the event of a power outage to save the fish room, as you know, I have a I purchased a big generator. This thing was about a hundred and hundred and a half, hundred and fifty dollars. And again, your support of the channel helps to cover those kinds of things. And also um and of course the cost of the of the generator, the cabling, the plug in box. I mean, this stuff is really adding up, and I haven't even installed the, the plug-in yet. The electrician's coming next week. It's going to be probably between $250 and $500 to get the electrical work done, to get it done correctly, so I can plug this thing in and not, uh, and not actually um, kill myself or destroy the house. So thank you very much to all of you who are helping out with that. And also... Uh, while I'm on the topic, a, bi a big uh, shout out to those of you who do the, the, monthly, the monthly support of the channel. And I'm talking about my Garage Gang. These are the um, Patreon monthly supporters. Let me go ahead and, and get up the list here. There they are. Monthly Patreon Garage Gang members, thank you so much to all of you who uh, who help with that. And it looks like we also have the Teespring somehow popped in there, but let's go ahead and get rid of that. So, big shout out to my Patreon supporters. I wouldn't be able to do any, hardly any of the things I'm able to do. Also, thank you to all of you who visit the Teespring uh, store and pick up coffee mugs and t-shirts and stuff like that. And what else? Just paying a few bills here. Bear with me. A big shout out to my friend Josh over at Cunningham Tropicals. Be sure to use those discount codes that we've set up for you. Uh, Josh and I are getting together this week, and we're going to talk about some new fish. So that's going to be exciting. Check out, uh, Josh got, has uh, some new arrivals. Check, check them out at CunninghamTropicals.com and use Benno15 for 15% off on fish. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. So what else? Did I miss anything? A big shout out to my wonderful moderators, of course, to my wonderful moderators. And then let's go ahead and get into the main topic, if you're ready. We'll start off with a um, question. This was the question that was asked. Please tell me in the comments below. This is at the YouTube community page. There's a thing called the YouTube community page, which you can visit. It's open to everybody. You don't have to be a member. And uh, I was asking for folks to tell me the kind of filter that they'll never buy again. Now, I'll tell you something just sort of a this is not a spoiler alert but just a preview of the follow-up which is going to be what's the best filter you ever owned and why but some of the filters which goes to show just how subjective things are in the fish world some of the filters that are on this list you're going to see them on the list next week 
on the best the best filter that I ever owned. <laughs> it's kind of funny how that works, but uh, at any rate, this is the uh, this was the question. Now let's get into some of the answers here. And I'm going to have to work this one at a time. But let's do the first one here. The first one uh, comes to us. All Pond Solutions. Now, All Pond Solutions is is essentially Sun Sun. It's, it's the Sun Sun European version. And I've heard that it's actually made a little better. And if you find All Pond Solutions here in the U.S., it's... It's UL tested, and uh, which I guess means that it's a little bit better electronically, but all pond solutions, and this is uh, Dunks Fish Gaming Channel 8985, Noisy Bugger, Noisy Booger, Noisy Bugger or Booger, <laughs> it is, and the UV bulb uh, broke on me leaked as well just a very cheap piece of plastic well just you know don't i want you you folks to always know you never have to candy coat or mince your words with me just tell me what you honestly think <laughs> obviously i don't think he's going to be buying an all pond solutions filter again now you're going to so you're going to see all pond solutions and you're going to see sun sun a couple times on this list and uh, another comment that came through uh, from Evan. AquaClear HOBs, cons. The pump is out of the water. The semi-clear uh, housing looks gross. The flow control is very limited. And the impeller locks up way more often than any other HOB. Bro, lots of space in the filter media. Well, I would say that those cons outweigh that pro because you can pick up other filters that give you a lot of media space. But, uh, you know, I've never had an aqua clear, but a couple of folks in the survey talked about the pump being out of the water. And I know my Marine Lands, I mean, the pump is in the, you know, is outside. I mean, are there, are there pumps that have the, the motor inside the aquarium? And would that be a, a, an electrical issue? I don't know. I don't know if that's a, a but I guess with aqua clears, I guess that's a problem. And I can see that how the, how the tubing, I've got a little hang on back on my Pleco filter, on my Pleco tank, and that tubing looks gross after about five days. I've got to pull it out and, and clean it out. So there's a vote for, uh, a vote for the aqua clear. Let's get rid of that one and get this next one in there. What is this comment? Any of the cartridge filters, such garbage and having to throw away media that has beneficial bacteria, not a good thing to do. I do like the title filters. The customization of them are great. I use them on all my tanks, title 95 to 110. So I'm, I've got different responses on title, but I, I agree on the cartridge idea. In, in my case, I've replaced cartridges in my Marineland hang-on backs. I've replaced them with the plastic frames that you can buy or that you, I think you get a couple of them with the filter, and then you can always buy more of them. But I just use reusable uh, sponges, usually egg crate pond sponges. Just be sure to point the egg crate so that the water is flowing into, into the area that has the impressions on it, the egg crate, right? Be sure the water's flowing towards the egg crate, toward the aquarium. And um, I just pull that out, clean the, clean the cage, right, the, the little the cartridge, rinse out the filter, and pop it back in. And those, those sponges last forever. You could conceivably do it. You know, when you, when you buy something from Swiss Tropicals, they have standard pieces of sponge that they cut for you, 
and they send you the leftover pieces. These are leftover, these are leftover pieces that that uh, that he sends to you. So you buy you buy the, the the big chunk of sponge, and then what he what he trims off, he sends over. You can use stuff like this as a uh, you know as a cartridge, you know, in a cartridge. There's nothing wrong with doing that, and this would work. And of course, this material lasts forever. So it's better for the environment. It's better for beneficial bacteria, like you mentioned. It's just it's just better all around, and certainly better for your pocketbook. A lot better for your pocketbook. But those cartridges get expensive real quick. All right, next we have Mikael loves life aquatics. Here we go. Another vote for Sun Sun. Now you know I, I you know I use a Sun Sun 704B on this guy here. A 210 gallon South and Central American tank. There's a sum that is being upgraded and replaced with a Cichet 9.0 pump, pumping a lot of water. And uh, and I've got a Sun Sun 704B. Now, his problem was reliability falls apart fast, water flow is very poor, and will leak, and you won't even know. But besides that, it's a great filter. <laughs> he will not be buying a Sun Sun in the near future. Now, that's the Sun Sun 3000. The Sun Sun 3000, and I think, didn't they have a 5000? It was supposed to be the fluval killer, you know, and. I don't know. It doesn't seem like it ever really got a lot of traction. But um, all of that being said, uh, and even with my endorsement of canister filters, I still keep them in big Rubbermaid, Rubbermaid tubs with watchdog water alarms. So uh, because they 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 have a lot of they have several points where hoses connect. Uh, where the units come together, there are several seams, places where water can start to leak. And because they are positioned under the aquarium, they're like, they'll just keep siphoning and, you know, dropping your water line forever. So I do encourage you to, to have, to keep them in, in tubs, keep them in, in Rubbermaid tubs, uh, put a piece of foam under them, and that'll absorb some vibration. Don't overfill the baskets, or else you'll you'll get rattling and humming and buzzing. And um, definitely, definitely keep a water alarm. I, I like the Watchdog; they're about ten bucks on Amazon. You can uh, go to my Amazon store. I, I think I list them at the Amazon store. Nick Garcia, Terra Whis uh, Tetra Whisper. It likes to randomly shut off and stay off until you gently touch the intake tube. You shouldn't have to touch, you know, just like you shouldn't have to hit your TV to make it work. You shouldn't have to kick your car to start it. Uh, that is what we call non-operational in the world of engineering. Um, I'm sorry, Tetra. You can do better. You know better. Tetra has massive booths usually uh, at the. Uh, over at the Aquashella. You know, they, they, I think they're trying, but they're also trying to save money. Paramount Investments. Sun Sun with UV. Garbage. You know, Paramount, just tell me what you think, man. Don't mince your words. Don't hold back. All right, full disclosure. I do not have the UV light running in my Sun Sun 704B. I took it out. I do have the uh, glass uh, sealed enclosure over the, you know, over the plug-in. But, you know, I think those UV lights are, they do, they do clarify the water a little bit. But the water is moving past them so quickly that they're not really doing much. You're better off with buying uh, a green killing machine. Green killing machine. I have one in my 90 gallon. I did notice a difference. 
and you'll get much, much more of you know the killing of of uh, viruses, the you know the the getting you know getting rid of uh, waterborne algae, things of this nature. Uh, you know, get a green killing machine. Don't don't bother with. You're better off with it with a Sun Sun three o three o four or a four o four without the UV uh, because it is a waste of time. And my Sun Sun, I service the O ring. I keep it lubricated with uh, silicone, right? With food grade silicone, uh, and it's made by Husky. I think it's called Husky One Hundred Food Grade Silicone. So I do keep my, I keep things lubricated, and I have had good luck with Sun Suns. A lot of folks haven't. I I would say it it's uh, it, it's just it's it's a, you love them or you hate them. It just seems like people love them or hate them. I haven't found people in between on these Sun Suns. Rag fifty four all pawn solution Sun Sun one thousand two thousand. Yeah. Both very noisy, and the shutoff lever broke on both. You've got to be really careful with the um, with the lever on it. Unfortunately, it is it's it's a it's a bad combination of requiring some force to close and being made of a thin plastic, which is just that's an engineering flaw. Once you know that, you know you 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 know you you shut them, you know you. You put your palm on the entire, on the entire, uh, I guess you'd call it lever, and you gently drop it. But again, that's an engineering. Uh, that's a that's a corner cutting, a cheap move on all pawn solutions, and and on Sun Sun. So if you do have a Sun Sun, be very careful on those levers because yes, they do break. And if they do break, now you've got to get like a pair of pliers to open that thing up and remove. The section that connects the hoses is just a, it's it's just a pain in the rear, so watch out for that. Got a couple more comments here that we can talk about, and I hope you're commenting. I'm not looking at the comments right now, but let me just check and make sure that. Uh, all right. Just make sure there isn't a comment there that says, Ben, we can't hear you. The uh, sound is... Anyway, hold on. So let's go to this next comment. Raz and Fishes. I think R Raz and Fishes is here today. Marineland canister filter. Everyone I own leaked inside the top cover where the primer pump is. I fix them. Then leak again. So they ended up in the landfill. I couldn't get them, but I couldn't give them to anyone in good conscience. Well, there you go. There you go. Now, I have the Marineland Emperor 400. I've been running three of them for many years. They've been okay, but again, uh, you know, each of us brings our own personal experience to the table, and Marineland is also one of those canisters that, that Requ you know they they recommend that you use their cartridges. I think that's where they make their money on their aftermarket cartridges, even though the the units themselves have become a lot more expensive. Like everything else, I mean, uh, what's an FX six going for now? Four hundred and twenty five dollars. So um, I don't think he's going to be buying a Marineland uh, filter again. So I get it. But, you know, these filters, just like everything else, uh, they, have to be, they have to be maintained and serviced. And that includes pulling out the impeller on your hang-on-back filters. Be sure you pull out the impeller at least once a quarter, right? Once every three months. Pull out the impeller. Uh, give the, the housing, the impeller housing, and the impeller itself a good cleaning. Otherwise, you're going to lose a lot of efficiency. Here's another vote from Scotty for the Sun Sun canister. Was garbage from the time I opened the box till I threw it out. Aqua Clear HOB rattled loud enough 
to hear it across my house and jammed up weekly. Well, there you go. Aqua Clear and Sun Sun gets another vote. I mean, where are we here on uh, who's, who's winning the contest? I think uh, Sun Sun and Aqua Clear are probably nose to nose at this point. And we have, let's see, two more comments, and we'll go ahead and open this up to discussion. Whips World in the house. Another vote for, this is for Aquions. Don't much care for the Aquions. Tried them several times, just keep breaking down. I'm on the fence with Marineland Pros. Yeah, the, Marine, the new Marineland does look a little bit more sturdy, looks a little bit better, you know, better built. I've even thought about uh, checking one out. Don't like that the intake spins and the whole motor intake assembly is too big to fit on a 55-gallon with glass canopy, but too small to fit on the lip of my 75. That's something you got to keep in mind. That's a good point. When you buy a filter, make sure that it's going to fit, especially if you have a, a Euro brace aquarium or an aquarium with it with a custom type of top uh top bracing it you could end up with not even being able to use it i had a um an acrylic aquarium in california and it had two large two large uh cutouts two large rectangular cutouts on the top of the aquarium in the acrylic and you couldn't hang anything on that everything had to be strung over the top and then somehow jerry rigged hold on and it was a, a very interesting setup doesn't like the marine land c series if they still make them the leakiest leakiest canister i've ever owned sun sun hasn't been much better well there you go he may be trying sun sun again i i do have a um a an a, i do have a video that maybe one of the moderators, and by the way, a big shout out to my wonderful moderators, but one of the moderators can maybe share, I have a playlist on canisters, and I have the tips for making sure that your canister, not just Sun Sun, but all canisters, uh, will function the way they're supposed to. Because when they don't, it's a big problem. Why do people like canisters? Why do they use them at all when you can get that much leaking? Um, people like them because they move a lot of water. They hold a tremendous amount, three, four, five times the uh, media you could, you could get into a hang on back. And, and they're out of sight. All you have is an intake and an output in the aquarium. So you don't have anything big and large in the aquarium, like a massive sponge or something. So. Um, People, especially folks with big African cichlids who don't have uh, plants doing a lot of work, they need a lot of water turnover, they have fish that are eating a lot and, and in turn producing a lot of waste, uh, they, they want that kind of volume in a filter. So you can make a case for canister filters. But let's, let's open this up. Let's open this up to... Uh, to discussion, and by that, of course, I mean the chat. Let's take a look at what what you're saying in the chat, and where is my chat? Hold on one second. Let me pull that up. My chat has disappeared. Hold on one second, and I will find it. It's a matter of dropping a link. Bear with me. Looks like somebody hit me with a super chat there. Hey, Adam. Thank you, my friend. That will be going into my electrician fund, my next big upcoming expense. All right, so hold on. Let me go ahead and, and get this chat. set up correctly
And then we'll take a look at your comments. There you are. Okay. So I had to drop a link from the YouTube channel into the chat. So let's take a look at what you folks are saying here. I am going back in the chat a little bit. Jerry says that my favorite filter is plants. Now, you know what? You can make a strong case for that, Jerry. And in those planted aquariums that I have currently, uh, the plants are doing the heavy lifting. They are absorbing. And, and, and by the way, do you know that plants prefer ammonia? They, they, that's their first choice. They prefer removing the ammonia out of the water. And of course, they remove nitrates too. But they go after that ammonia like crazy. And apparently, they, uh, they thrive on that ammonia. But yeah, plants, if you can use plants, use plants. I've thought about putting plants in my sumps under the aquariums where I can't have plants because the fish are plant destroyers. And so that is still an option. When you do that, of course, you have to put some lights under there. That'll keep those plants alive and run them on a timer. So it's, it's a, a little bit of a project. I'm in the middle of five projects right now. Generators, sumps, getting in some new fish etc etc so not sure if i want to add too many projects at once let's see here hey saline aquatics glad you're here my friend and again a big a big shout out to the wonderful moderators Whip says that most newer HOB power filters have the motor inside the tank. Interesting. Supposed to show how long it's been since I bought a, um, a new HOB. I've been using these old marine lands since the uh, prehistoric age. So there you go. Christopher Junkin. Uh, he, he loves the titles and he loves the uh, AquaClears. And so, like I said in the beginning, the, these, these ideas about uh, filters are so subjective, and everybody brings their, their, their own, their own uh, experience to the table. Mexicali Fish Keeper in the house. Hello, Mexicali Fish Keeper. Fish Ranch. And says that his AquaClear runs well. There you go. And Fish, Fish View Cam is running a couple aqua clears on a 55 gallon Mabuna tank and a Sun Sun HW3000. There you go. Now, see, the funny thing is, is in a week or two, when I talk about your favorite filters, I'm going to have comments about how horrible those filters are. <laughs> oh, it's so subjective and so anecdotal. Henry Bowman in the house. I had a Marineland 220 and a 360 canister filtered. After six months, six months, the valve blocks started leaking, and still 18 months later, I can't get parts for these filters. Henry, it looks like that's headed for the landfill, unfortunately. One thing I noticed, too, is that sometimes, I mean, yeah, sometimes we make mistakes in setting it up. That's true. Uh, but sometimes you get a bad one and i've heard that from people they just get a bad one no matter what they do they can't fix it and now we're back to the integrity of the company will the company replace the item and when you're buying unfortunately very often when you're buying stuff from china it's very hard to get a hold of anybody let alone get a product replaced now i i think chewy's chewy started offering uh sun suns if you're going to get a chew, if you're going to get a Sun Sun, get it from Chewy's because I think they will replace it if uh, if you have a problem. Kent A J D K, hello to you, my friend. Peas and Haps Forever doesn't like the Marine Lands.
Zen Ginger in the house. Hey, Zen. Good to see you. And Craig Campbell is here. CSA pumps are bulletproof. Craig, I've got to agree with you. i got to agree with you. You never hear them. They never make a sound. And it's so funny because I think CSA makes the Seachem title. I think the title HOB is actually, at least the motor on it, is made by by uh, Seachem. So, but the pumps I have, I have five. I have two five point oh's under the three hundred gallon, and a nine point oh under the two ten, and they just they're the energizer, the energizer bunny of pumps. It looks like somebody else threw a uh, super chat at me for the electrical. The upcoming electrical work. Let me see. Did I see a super chat? Yep, there you go. Angelo. Thank you, Angelo. That will be going directly to my electrician to get the uh, 50 amp hookup on the side of the house. Today marks two years starting my 75 gallon cichlid aquarium. All thanks to you, Ben. Don't think I could have done it without you. You rock. Thank you. That is awesome. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate that. And that's my favorite kind of comment that I actually got through and helped somebody. Let's see here. It looks like Christopher Junkin, when he was importing fish, early 2000s, was using sumps on all my stingray and predatory tanks as refugiums worked like a charm in tanks that I couldn't put plants into. Yep, there you go. And if you saw the, the video of my visit to the Ohio Fish Rescue, he has an above-ground uh, swimming pool as a sump. And then he has like a 500-gallon drilled acrylic tank holding all the media. So all the water dumps into this, you know, 500-gallon acrylic drilled acrylic tank with a tube coming out of the side of it. It goes through there, dumps into this swimming pool. And that swimming pool has these uh, pathos plants, these just a jungle of plants that are, are helping to extract ammonia. and. Uh, but imagine a sump the size of a you know above ground swimming pool that that's i don't know 10,000 gallons maybe i don't know it was just it was just nuts you can see one of the moderators can share the link i i, I was just i was just in awe you know i mean you look at you look at this i'm putting in a an upgraded 38 gallon sump under this aquarium I mean, get your wits get your wits around a ten thousand gallon sump, ten thousand gallons. I mean, you could go in there and swim, and that's the sump, adding water volume, and uh, probably there was a settling pond. The water would go through this long stream, which I think was like a settling, like a settling pond or a settling stream kind of a thing. It'd go through this long stream with plants. And then from that stream that he had created, it would then dump into this giant, you know, 500-gallon acrylic media container. And then, and then from that, through a pipe, would then dump into the pool, into the above-ground pool, and then be pumped back to the aquarium. I mean, it was, anyway, scales of, I mean, just the scale of magnitude, the magnitude of it, right? I mean, I'm, I'm at the... I'm at the subatomic level here with my sump. My sump is subatomic, and his are galactic. <laughs> Just to get difference of scale. <laughs> and uh, and by the way, what about his stingrays? Did you see his stingrays in the in the? They were gorgeous. He had even an albino one, and the stingrays are very special because the stingrays help them to fund. The, the entire operation because the pups which again is a, is a testament to how healthy everything is those stingrays are are popping out pups all the time 
And so they, they, they grow those pups out and they sell them. And that's partly how they're funding Ohio Fish Rescue, that and, and us watching their videos. But um, my goodness. The sump that I'm setting up here. It's going to be a different type of sum. I don't think I'm going to be using the socks. So, you know, once every two weeks, I got to swap out socks. It's not a big deal. Not that hard to do. But I think in the first chamber of the new sum, I'm going to be, I'm going to be filling it up with these blue balls. Now, don't start with the Ben's Blue Balls jokes. <laughs> so, I have a whole big bag of these, of these Blue Balls that were given to me by my friend John here in Nashville. So the water is going to go through these blue balls. Now these blue balls float. So what they're going to do is they're going to be banging into each other and moving around and rotating. So you're going to have a, a, a sort of a hybrid version of a moving bed uh, type of filter. So, so the blue balls are banging against each other. And when the, when, the, when the balls are banging, they're knocking off weak bacteria. Weak bacteria falls off. Stronger bacteria holds on. And so over time, you develop some healthy bacteria, healthy bacteria holding on to those blue balls. Then um, it also does another thing. Because of the way they're shaped and the water is, is cascading down on top of them, they oxygenate the heck. You get a tremendous amount of oxy oxygen occurring in this, in this stirred up situation where the water is dumping into the sump. Then from there, it, it's going to flow out of that chamber and, and go through those four inch wide, you know, three, well, 12 inches, four inches for each one, coarse, medium, fine sponges. Now, I'm also going to throw in the sponge that's in the exist, you know, in the sump right now. So that's going to be another, I think, three inches of sponge. And then there's going to be some of that Ciporax media before. Now, I'll probably put a little bit of uh, maybe a little bit of poly, polyfill or, or a pinky floss right before it dumps, dumps onto the media so the media doesn't become clogged. Even though I got a feeling that after traveling through those sponges, that water is going to be pretty pristine. Because you want clean water going over your media so that it doesn't clog it and prevent bacteria from developing deep inside the media, which is where you can get some of that um, anaerobic bacteria that can help with nitrate reduction. That's going to occur inside the media. But if, you're, if you've got the media gunked up, it's very unlikely that's going to happen. So. But if you can get bacteria growing inside where it's not going to be subject to a lot of water flow and too much oxygen, right? The outside will get lots of oxygen with water movement, but the inside of the media. Now, this is the theory uh, that people were using with the biohome, uh, that the bacteria deep in the biohome would go ahead and grow some of that anaerobic bacteria, which would reduce nitrates. This was the whole theory behind. Um, behind biohomes zero nitrate aquarium in the case of of uh, african cichlids you just have to use so much of it that it became cost prohibitive for a lot of folks but there are some folks on on youtube that say they were able to reduce nitrates to zero without water changes just by creating so much anaerobic bacteria living deep inside their media so whether you uh Believe in that or not, or follow that, or are convinced of that, that's, that, that's your call. So let's see here. Christopher talking about roller, roller filters. 
you're getting into some of the more esoteric uh, type of pre-filter. The roller filters are a, a, a strip of cleaning, just a strip of material that the water hits, and it rotates. You, it, like the way you pull down sheets in a bathroom, you know, you pull that sheet down, it's coming off of a roller, and it, it can actually be set up in some of the higher, more expensive ones, can be set up automatically to move, you know, to gradually move over time until it gets to the end of the roll. Then you pop the roll out, put another one in. And so now you're talking about a very high-end uh, component in a sum filter. And certainly you've got an aquarium with, you know, five to $10,000 worth of corals. You get a roller mat, you get a refugium, you, you know, you get, you know, you get all, the, all these different things in your, in your sump. I don't, this is a very basic freshwater aquarium. I don't need those bells and whistles. So let's see here. I'm going back to your comments. Craig Campbell, I use Biohome in my pond. How's that been going, Craig? Are you getting a good result? I mean, Biohome, when I used it in California, I used uh, Biohome. I used Marine Pure. Um, I, like, I liked it. I had good results. I had a very rock-solid aquarium. Somebody says they love their you your their underground filter. My fish tanks, tank aquatics. There's let me tell you, if you have plants, underground filter is amazing because you're actually it's like you're you're uh, turbocharging and high high speed delivering nutrients to your plants, and that that's that's a good thing. Adkins Nature Aquariums. And that is uh, a little bit of wisdom from Adkins Nature Aquariums. You should always do your research. Don't just jump in with no idea what you're, you'll be installing. Very, very true. Fish Eye View Camp. <laughs> very, very cool. And don't forget. Don't forget. If you want to cover the camera on your computer with a little window cover that slides back and forth, I have about 10 or 15 of these left. Just send me an email, ben.o.cichlid at gmail, and I'll send you one of these glass cages. It has a little peel and stick on the back, and then you just slide it back and forth to open the camera. So nobody's watching you when you don't want them to be watching you. Brian Hahn in the house. Hola, amigos. Hello, Brian, one of my Garage Gang members. All right. Very good results. Excellent. Yep. I, 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 I think uh, uh, Richard Threw, the owner of Biohome, I think he's the real deal. Here in America, I think you buy it from, uh, is it Great Wave Engineering? Is where you get the Biohome from, Great Wave? I think it's called Engineering. And you can get it delivered to you here in the States. Uh, and, of course, if you're in Europe, in the U.K., you buy it directly from, uh, from Pond Guru. All right. Did I miss any super chats? If I did, I apologize. Today's super chats are going towards the installation of the 50 amp plug on the side of the house. Hey, Jerry. Jerry's in the house. Hello to you and to Janice. I said hi to Jen, Zen Ginger already. Hello, but hello again, Zen. Crows Aquatics.
Wet Sleeves Aquatics. I use Sun Sun 704B. That's what I have running here. On my 75 gallon, the only thing is the UV light doesn't last for more than a month. Now, when I was using the UV light, when I had the UV light in the unit, I was only using it on weekends. I would just turn it on the weekend, turn it off, you know, turn it on Saturday morning, turn it off Sunday night. And I didn't run it 24 7. Because, yeah, you'll burn it out. Even my uh, green killing machine, UV light on my 90 gallon, I don't run it all the time. It's on, the, it's on a separate timer. I had it on the, on the timer with the lights. Now it's on its own separate timer. It runs for six to eight hours a day. Now, that being said, if I end up putting discus in that aquarium, I probably will run it constantly and repa replace the light maybe every Every five or six months, replace the UV light, which could get expensive, but not as expensive as losing $100 a piece, uh, you know, discus fish. Henry Bowman, I replaced the cartridges in my Marine Land hang on the backs with Aqua Clear sponges. Way cheaper. Very true. And uh, those sponges rinse, and uh, if you listen to uh, Primetime Aquatics, Jason and Joanne, who I like a lot and respect and, and believe, uh, you can use tap water. Use a little tap water on those, drop them right back in, and you'll be fine. A fish view can, Otis, Ortis leak detector alarm. Shuts the power off to the canister. Now, you see, that that's a little bit uh, more high-tech than the watchdog. The watchdog will give you a, lo a loud shrill to let you know something is wrong, but it doesn't hook up to any kind of power shutoff. So that's pretty good. Now, unfortunately, because it's on a siphon, I think that if you have a leaking canister, I'm pretty sure if you have a leaking canister, I think it'll keep leaking. Maybe just not as fast if you can turn the power off. MNC Aquatics. He hates canisters and sumps. There you go. For every opinion, there is it's like a, a law of physics. For every aquar uh, aqu aquarium care opinion, there is an opposite but equal counter opinion. <laughs> Quantum Aquatics. All right, let's see. P is the pH and hardness meters. Zen Ginger, if you use a filtration system with UV, don't you have to kill filtration to medicate or do other treatments, or is it not enough to matter? I've never actually used one, so not sure. It will kill... Uh, you know, spores, bacteria, viruses. So you probably do have to treat it the way you would treat chemical filtration, like um, pyrogen and uh, things like that, even, even activated uh, you know, carbon. You do have to take it out of the equation while medicating. That would be my, my guess, not, so, not something I've given much thought to or had to think about, but I it would make sense because one of the things in UV is it does kill uh, it it does kill particles in the water column. I imagine it could neutralize medication. You know, when when you buy medication, when you buy meds, Metro or Prozzi, things like that, you know, there's usually a phone number. And I've done this. I've called and also, I fired them an email, and, and usually, you know, even CCAM, they'll usually get right back to you with uh, any question that you might have. Like, why do I have to medicate for the full volume of the tank when I'm only changing out 10% of the water and when I'm going directly from tap to tank? You send them that question, they'll send you a very nice explanation why that's the case. And it'll make total sense. Salient says 
that the instructions say to shut off UV. Yeah, there you go. I think that would be the case. Dennis Riddell thinks that the Oase Pro. Danny, I'm glad you're here. Another one of my moderators, along with Zen Ginger and Salian um, <clears throat> and Jerry. But uh, Den Danny loves the Oase Pro Thermo. Says it blows the FX4, 5, and 6 away. Now, Dennis, you're, you're going to have to tell us why. So you need to add a comment now. Why? Why do you think the Oase Pro is better than the FX? Because a lot of people swear by FX, including Big Rich. Big Rich had a bunch of Fluval FX6s laying around. And I told him, I said, what are all these FX6s I see everywhere? And he uses them as polishing filters on those monster tanks. And his comment was, it works. They work. And you got to stick with what works. So why do you think the Always Pro Thermo blows away the FX line? Please tell us, Danny. And then I'm going to put, uh, and then I'll put Big Rich and you in a cage match. Welcome to the party, Les. Ozzy the Oscar. <laughs> GP. GP, did I say hi to you already? I'm very glad you're here, my friend. I'm cruising the chat. Cruising the chat. What am I doing? Vincent, is it Foti? Vincent Foti, 302 for five years. Is that a Sun Sun 302? Most affordable canister have replaced the gasket and the impeller valve flip and pressure flaps, all due to normal wear and tear. Five years, that's good. I ran 302Bs. I think they were 302Bs. Two 302Bs on a 60-gallon in California for four years. No problems at all. Danny Aquatics, I think we're doing well, Danny. Thanks for asking. Craig Campbell, the dreaded blue dials on the titles. Not sure what those blue, bile, blue, blue dials are. Adam Frankel, Ben, I've been using the root tabs, throwing an extra water change in between the seven days. I'm doing much better on the brown algae. Thank you very much. You're awesome. Oh, good. Good. I'm telling you, 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 you just, you, you just gotta give the plants. Uh, if you have green, if you have plants in there, give them a chance to get really established, and they'll outcompete the brown algae. But, and and those root tabs will give an edge to those planted, you know, to your, to your root, you know, to your rooted plants, and so they'll just outcompete for nutrients. Brian Park switched to extreme food for my cichlids. They love it now, and they've turned into piranhas. Oh, extreme's the real deal. Good stuff. I met the creator of it at Aquashella. It's, it's just the real deal. And um, I do mix other stuff in there. You know, full disclosure, I do mix some Sarah with my extreme. And they do get frozen krill as well. But that's good. That's good. I love when they're eating aggressively. That's a great sign. My sand diver is acting a little funny around feeding time. He's not attacking food. Maybe he's got, otherwise he looks good, good color, good shape, no sunken belly, no bloating. Um, I'm keeping a close eye on him. I'm going to go out. I ran out of frozen krill. I'm going to go get some frozen krill and see if he eats it because, uh, when African cichlids don't eat, that's never a good sign. So I'm going to keep an eye on him. And I hope he doesn't uh, start to deteriorate on me. Peace and Haps Forever loves Fluval and sponge filters. And using the Fluval 300s, 406s, 
407 for years. They just keep running with no issues. Running a Fluval 4 and 6 on a 125. That's a strong recommendation. I mean, you can complain about the uh, Fluval um, price. A lot of people do, but it's a battleship. It just is a battleship. Aqua Balls in the house. Hey, Aqua Balls, good to see you there, buddy. Christopher says has never had a bad Oase product or C shape. I, I love the the C shape products. I haven't had Oase. I I would consider getting an Oase canister based on the on what I saw. Aquashella. They look very well built. They make a lot of sense. They have a built in pre filter, so you don't have to touch your your media. You just pull out that pre filter, rinse it, and drop it back in. So you can leave your media alone. I like that a lot. So. Um, it's on my list of possible things to acquire in 2024. Eric, what salts are folks using for African cichlids? I'm using the, uh, the Malawi lake salt, which is not salt like aquarium salt. I've talked about this before. I've used the sea chem salt and gotten great results with it. I've also, I'm currently using the Fritz the Fritz lake salt. And it's not uncommon for people to comment how my African cichlids are so colorful, even though they're not in breeding dress. I think a lot of it has to do with a combination of things, good quality food, good water quality, but also I've been using the, uh, the, uh, the trace minerals, the trace minerals that are, that are added to the water by adding those salts to the water. Very different from using aquarium salt for bloating or constipation. That's a different kind of salt. Uh, Craig, I am thinking about a, uh, a refugium refugi refugi <laughs> live plants. I thought about that, but I'm, as I mentioned earlier, it does require having some plant lighting, things of that nature. It's, it's, it's on the list, but it's, it's near the bottom of the, of the 2024 list. There you go. Big shout out to all of you who are here today watching the live stream and have hung in till the end big shout out to my moderators and to those of you who are members of of the uh, garage gang patreon supporters big shout out to you and uh this week i'm not sure what videos i'm going to be releasing this week i have some product reviews that i'm very overdue on and i probably assuming i get that the uh Ciporax from my friends over at Sarah, I'll probably be releasing the uh, the sump in you know the sump video. I've got to check the plumbing to make sure the plumbing lines up right because I have what are called unions. Unions are things that you can loosen and then turn the pipe and then tighten them again. So it gives you a lot of flexibility in your plumbing. If you ever do a plumbing project for an aquarium, use lots of unions. Because I have unions, I'm going to be able to adjust the plumbing so it drops exactly where I want it to drop. Drop. The only question I have is, is the soft plumbing, the vinyl plumbing that I have, is it going to be long enough? Because right now it's it's you know it's 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 of a perfect length, but it but that 29 gallon is a lot shorter. So I've got a um, the return pump is in a is in a further away chamber so i'm hoping that that it's long enough i'm gonna push the, the the sump against the side wall not so it's touching but close underneath the cabinet so the the hose should reach if not i'm gonna have to replace that hose the hard plumbing i'm not worried about because i've got the, the unions and i'll be able to adjust the hard plumbing so the water falls where i want it to fall 
but um, the soft plumbing, I might have to go out and buy some vinyl hosing and add a little more length to that hose. We'll see. We'll see. Fingers crossed. So uh, thank you to all of you who super chatted. Again, that money is going into my 50 amp installation for my backup generator so that I feel a lot more confident in the event of a power outage. I don't lose everything. And thank you to all of you who have supported the channel by becoming Patreon members and you've helped me to buy these big units that I'm moving into a 12,000 watt uh, generator. Uh, I think it's peak watt 12,000 by Duramax and uh, running watts, 9,500 running watts. That's going to run a lot more than just the fish room. I think it'll also run a good portion of the house as well. So that's going to be a, a great backup generator. At any rate, thank you, everybody. You're the best. And I will see all of you next week at the same time, uh, assuming, uh, you know, God willing, the creek don't rise. And uh, you rock, my friends. I'll see you next week. That's it for me. Let me bring up the final screen here. And you folks can go enjoy your weekend. Have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you next week.